begin by demonstrating a forceps delivery from beginning to end, starting with the initial placement of the left blade. You'll notice the operator holding the handle of the left blade with only the fingertips of the left hand dangling it perpendicular to the ground. The handle is then advanced in a straight arc until the maternal thigh is reached. Concurrently, the first three fingers of the operator's opposite hand have been used to make space between the fetus's left parietal bone and vagina. Next, the left hand drops medially to begin advancing the toe inwards while the thumb of the vaginal hand adds pressure to the heel of the forceps blade to gradually guide the blade into the left side of the vagina. The steps are then repeated. This time, the right blade is held by the operator's right hand and advanced along the space between the fetus's right parietal bone and the right half of the vagina. The blades are then locked into place. We will now perform three checks to correspond to three dimensions in which appropriate placement should be confirmed. First, the line formed by the handles coming together should be in line with a sagittal suture. Second, the plane bisecting the shanks should be one to two finger breasts anterior to the posterior fontanelle. And third, no more than one finger should be able to be inserted in each fenestration. After placement is confirmed, traction is initiated. Traction should be along the pelvic curve, constantly taking into account the presentation and fetal station as progress is made. Traction for an occiput anterior fetus will be downwards, axis traction, and then eventually outwards and upwards. Let's take all of that step by step. Though not depicted in the demonstration, we always begin with a ghost application. This involves holding the forceps in the anticipated orientation given the position of the head, whether occiput anterior, left occiput anterior, right occiput anterior, and so forth. This helps to facilitate step two, identifying the posterior blade. Some providers will always start with the left blade, but we prefer to start with the posterior blade, i.e. the blade that will be closer to the rectum after placement. In an LOA presentation, you can imagine this is the left blade. In an ROA presentation, on the other hand, that would be the right blade. If the baby is straight away, we'll usually start with the left, as it just makes the English lock easier to catch. And for the purpose of today's demonstration, we'll assume a straight OA presentation and start with the left blade. The next step is to dangle and appose the chosen blade to the fetal scalp. Doing this really involves three steps. First, the opposite hand here, the right, makes room between the left maternal vagina and left parietal bone. Next, the blade is slipped in. This next step is critical, in which we turn the blade so it is truly palm side against the fetal scalp, or the cephalic curve side for the purist. This should result in the grooves of the handle facing directly cephalad, while the handle itself is perpendicular to the floor. Now for the placement. Guide the handle in a straight arc until the maternal thigh is reached. Then, drop the handle medially to begin advancing the toe inwards using only the pressure of your right thumb on the heel of the blade. Let's view that arc from a different angle. Again, it's critical that this arc not move cephalad or caudad at all until the maternal thigh is reached. Dropping the handle too soon sends the toe posteriorly into the sacrum rather than into the hollow along the parietal bone. So now, watching the correct arc just one more time, let's see what's happening at the level of the vagina. As the blade hits the maternal thigh and drops medially, the thumb is able to nudge it in slightly without sending it off course. You'll now repeat the preceding two steps in order to place the opposite blade, this time holding the right blade with your right hand, making space between the right half of the vagina and the fetus's right parietal bone. Placing the second blade is always a bit more snug, 
that can be done smoothly by following the same cardinal steps. You'll now lock the forceps and move on to our placement checks. As described earlier, we confirm placement in three planes. First, we ensure that we are located midline by confirming that the line formed by the handles coming together is in line with the sagittal suture. Second, we confirm that we are at the flexion point by ensuring that the plane bisecting the shanks should be one to two finger breaths anterior to the posterior fontanelle. Pulling without this check will only result in head extension without descent. And third, we confirm that we are anchored well beyond the malar eminence, meaning we don't have a short application. This is done by ensuring no more than one finger can be inserted into each fenestration. We then begin the actual traction. For all but the most outlet of forceps, we typically employ axis traction. This involves one hand holding the handle and finger guards from below, while the other presses the shanks downward towards the floor. This allows movement of the biparietal diameter under the symphysis. Once this is cleared, the direction of force changes to follow the pelvic curve and the direction of least resistance. And here, another angle of the same. Again, note the degree of downward axis traction until the fetal head has cleared the symphysis. Finally, once the head has cleared the symphysis for most deliveries, we will have an assistant perform a modified Ritkin, disarticulate, and then complete the delivery. The other option is to deliver through, though this may increase the risk of higher order lacerations since the instruments are presumably more space occupying when present. And so for a final review, start with your ghost application, choose your posterior blade, in this case left, hold a perpendicular to the ground, app pose to the fetal head, and then complete your arc into the maternal pelvis. Do the same with the opposite blade. Again, begin by holding it perpendicular to the ground, app pose to the fetal head, and then complete your arc into the maternal pelvis using only your thumb for any needed force. Lock your blades and perform your three checks. First, begin by ensuring that you are midline Next, confirm that you are at the flexion point, and then finally, that you have an adequately deep placement past the malar eminences. Finally, perform axis traction down, then out, then up, ending in a Ritkins and disarticulation, or not. And finally, you are well on your way to a successful forceps-assisted vaginal delivery.